In Creole Parametric, there is a special option with the Extrude and Revolve features to fill in gaps. It's called Cap with Model Geometry. Let me show you how it works. Here I have a part model. I'm going to create a sketch on this datum plane. I will click it with the left mouse button and then choose the sketch tool from the mini toolbar. And I'm gonna use the right mouse button to get to my sketch references. I wanna lock the sketch into a couple of surfaces. So I will select them and I'm going to create an open sketch. And that's one of the requirements for this option. It has to be an open sketch and it has to intersect with part geometry. So let me use the right mouse button. I'm just gonna create a line here attached to the edge. And let's change some of the dimensions here. I'll change this to 135. And let me also use the dimension tool. I just want to capture the length of that line. I'll make it a value of 60. And now let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. I'm going to extrude this. And since it's just an open sketch, by default, it's going to be created as a surface feature. I'm going to right mouse click on this and change it to symmetric. I can grab the drag handles. Let's make it pretty wide. Let's make it a value of 200. And I want to generate this as a solid feature. So you can go to the dashboard or you can use your right mouse button functionality to create this as a solid. And I need to thicken the sketch. Let me make sure that it is going in the direction I want. Let's change this to a big value that I can see. And if you take a look at it, it is automatically intersecting with that side surface. So if we go to the options tab, there's an option that is automatically checked. It is cap with model geometry. Let me show you what happens if I turn this off. Well, it just takes that sketch and extrudes the thickness and we end up with a little gap. Let me turn or change to one of my saved views. Oh, I don't have one. Let me just look right straight on over on here. So you can see that we end up with a gap in between there. But if I check the option to cap with model geometry, it fills it in. Now there are two possible solutions for what to use as the capping surface. So you could use the next button to see what it would look like capping with the horizontal surface instead of the vertical surface. So that's how you can toggle that one. I'm gonna hit the check mark. I'm gonna create one more in this particular part model to show you that sometimes you could cap at both ends. So let me turn on my datum plane display. And for this one, it'll make it easier if I turn on the display of a cross section. I'm going to create a sketch on this datum plane. Let me use the sketch tool from the mini toolbar. Once again, I will add in a couple of references because again, it's going to be an open sketch and it has to attach on at least one end to model geometry. This time though, I'm going to attach it at two ends. So it's going to look a lot like the sketch that you would use for a rib feature, but I'm going to extrude it. Let me change this dimension here to 60. And let me use the right mouse button to get to the dimension tool and dimension from here to here, and middle mouse button, and I'll change that to a value of 120. So this is good for my sketch. Let me hold down the right mouse button to get to the green check mark. Let me turn off my datum plane display in order to unclutter the screen. And with the sketch still selected, I will use the extrude tool. Let me flip the direction that it's going and let me make it a shorter width. I'm only going to use width of about 40. So once again, I'm getting a surface feature. I'm getting a non-solid feature. Let's generate this as a solid feature and let's thicken the sketch. And let's use a thickness that I can see. Let's once again try a value of eight or so. And now if I go to the options tab, you'll see that automatically caps on both ends. Cap with model geometry for section endpoint one and cap with model geometry for section 
and 0.2. Let me turn off the first one and let me turn off the second one. You can see that it's sort of like, you know, going through the model there on the bottom. As a matter of fact, let me do something. Let me flip the direction over here so it's a little bit more obvious ha what's happening with our model. We're ending up with uh, different gaps in here, but let's turn on the option to cap at the top end, and that takes care of that small gap, and then cap at the bottom end, and it ends up extending our geometry. So it's a nice little way of automatically taking care of gaps. Let's hit the check mark. And as I'd mentioned, this can be used with extrude or revolve. Let me switch over to a different part model. And let me recreate a sketch in here. I'm going to hide this one for a moment. Let me turn on my datum plane display. I'm going to pick this plane to sketch on. And let me unclutter the screen. And let's add to our list of sketch references. I'm going to pick the top surface here. And I want to intersect with this rounded curved surface. So let me use the option to intersect the selected geometry with the sketching plane. And I'll pick this over here so I get my little sketch reference. And now I will create a straight line like I did in the first example. And let's make it over here and let's change this to a value of 135. Let's use the dimension tool to put a length to that line. And I'll use a value here of 0.25. And let me use the right mouse button in order to get out of sketch mode. And with the sketch still selected, I will right mouse button so I can get to the revolve command. And for my axis of revolution, we will pick a datum axis in the model. But once again, I want to generate this as a solid feature, not a surface feature. So I can do that from the right mouse button menu. And let me flip the direction that we're creating it. And I need to thicken it in order to make it as a solid. And let me change this to something I can see. It has a value of 0.5. Oh, way too big. Let's go with 0.1. And let me also change the angle to sort of like allow you to see the cross section of it. And let's flip the angle direction. Okay. And so once again, we are getting the gap automatically filled in in this case. So let's go to the options tab. So if I uncheck the cap with model geometry, here you can see how we end up with that little gap. It's basically going to thicken by offsetting normal to the original surface that was created. But let's cap with model geometry. Once again, we have two possible solutions based on the two surfaces that my entity intersected. If I go to the previous option, well now it's using the top horizontal surface as the capping geometry. I can hit the next button. Now it's using the side surface, which I think looks better. So let's complete our feature with the check mark. And there you can see it. That is how the cap with model geometry option works for your extrude and revolve features.